Well, reaction now from political scientist, activist and author Norman Finkelstein. Joining me live there in New York, Israel and its Western allies maintain the country has the right to self-defense. So is Hamas responsible for this crisis? Well, if you look at the sequence of events, there was a lull between Israel and the Palestinians in Gaza up until November 8th. On November 8th, Israel killed a Palestinian child. Then there was some Palestinian retaliation. They blew up a tunnel, injuring an Israeli soldier. And then subsequently, they fired on an Israeli jeep, injuring four Israeli uh, soldiers. Uh, then Israel killed two more Palestinian children. And during the funeral of the two children who were killed, uh, Israel fired on the tent where the attendees to the funeral were present. And then the conflict escalated until November 12th, when there was a, a ceasefire negotiated. And it seemed as if the ceasefire was taking hold. Uh, and then Israel used the occasion of the ceasefire uh, to assassinate uh, what you might call the strongman of Gaza. And also, as the Israeli newspapers pointed out, uh, Mr. Jabari, who they assassinated, was also, in effect, Israel's enforcer. That's not my words. That's the words of uh, a military correspondent for Haaretz, Israel's leading newspaper. The person they killed was Israel's enforcer uh, in Gaza. Why did Israel break that ceasefire then and carry out that assassination at a very delicate time? Well, most of the speculation has been that it has to do with the upcoming elections in Israel. That was a factor, but I think it's a minor factor. The basic fact is that Israel has suffered uh, a sequence of foreign policy debacles. Uh, they tried to orchestrate an attack on Iran. It failed. Mr. Netanyahu went to the U.N., smuggled in a bomb, the nuclear bomb that Iran supposedly has. Uh, and when he held up the bomb for the General Assembly, uh, he was seen to be, quite correctly, to be a maniac. Uh, then there was the Hezbollah flying a drone, a drone uh, weapon uh, over or nearby Dimona. There was the fact that Qatar's head of state visited Gaza. There was the fact that Prime Minister Erdogan of Turkey was saying he was also going to go to Gaza. And then their own puppets, uh, the puppet regime they established in the West Bank, the Palestinian Authority, even their puppets were getting uppity and were threatening to go to the United Nations and ask for observer status. And they said Israel won't be able to put sanctions on them because, after all, they are doing Israel's dirty work in the West Bank. So things were getting out of control. And as Israel said, uh, when it launched its latest assault on Gaza, they said, we have to restore our deterrence capacity, that is, restore the Arab world's fear of us. Uh, but it had very little to do with trying to restore Gaza's fear of Israel. And their main concern was the, Ar the natives were getting restless, the Arabs were getting too uppity, the Muslims were getting too uppity, and it was time to put on another display of Israel's power to murder. You say things are getting out of control. Just how bad could this situation become, not just between Israel and Palestine, but also for the region no, as a whole? Uh, uh... Actually, I'm skeptical that this actual, uh, the current escalation, I'm skeptical that it'll escal escalate yet further. Uh, first of all, we have to bear in mind that Turkey is now doing the U.S.'s dirty work in Syria, and they're going to be incensed that as they carry on their work in, regarding Syria, it's now going to be said that they care more about the Syrians than the people of Gaza. Uh, Turkey doesn't want that to be said. So Turkey will have, be on the phone with Washington. And Egypt doesn't want a mass influx of Gazans into Egypt uh, if Israel attacks. On the other hand, Israel can't seal the gates of Gaza like uh, Mubarak did. And so they're going to be on the phone to Washington. And I think the pressures are going to be brought to bear on Washington and then on Israel to agree to a ceasefire. Live from New York, political scientist and activist and author Norman Finkelstein, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on RT. We appreciate your time. Thank you.